Okay, now we're gonna jump into our very first project using the Bootstrap 4 Alpha. And we're gonna start with our basic hand-coded Bootstrap 4 website. It's got this cover section is what I call it because it covers the height and width of the browser. It's got this centered content here with an opt-in box. Uh, and that's centered using Flexbox. And then we are also going to code the navigation bar. So pretty straightforward, we're gonna take baby steps. All right, so we're gonna jump into our code editor now. And I'm using brackets, cause it's free and it's great. And uh, for those of you who've been following uh, my coding tutorials for a while now, you'll notice that I have been kind of transitioning from Coda to brackets. Now, some of you might be wondering why brackets over Coda? I still love Coda and I still use it for my client projects, but I really like brackets and I, I use it almost exclusively now for my tutorials because I want my students to also be able to have access to the same code editor that I'm using rather than having to pay a hundred bucks for a code editor. And Brackets has been uh, super great to me and I know a lot of you guys have been super pumped about it as well. So here we are in Brackets and I'm in that Bootstrap 4 folder that I created on the desktop. If you don't have that, you're gonna have to go ahead and create a Bootstrap 4 folder and add an index file and then also uh, install Bootstrap. Whether you wanna use the CDN, you can use the CDN, or you can install the entire source files, or you can install it using Bower. However you do it, you need to install Bootstrap for Alpha. And in the previous lecture, I gave you the option to download the course files, something that you should have done. If not, go back and do that. And I will also provide in that download the same version that I'm using in this tutorial, just in case things are different and you wanna follow along before you upgrade to the latest version. So I'm gonna be using the Bower uh, install here. And again, it's just Bootstrap uh, for Alpha. It's got Bootstrap and jQuery. And I have my index file here with the link to the Bootstrap minified CSS. And I also have jQuery added in here and the bootstrap min.js. So I'm up and running and good to go and ready to start coding the cover and the navigation bar. Now, one other thing that you're gonna to need to do is in that download where you were given all of the course files, you're gonna to need to take the image folder and pull it into your uh, current bootstrap for uh, folder that you're using because we're going to be accessing and, and requiring a lot of these images throughout the development of these three sites. So I'm going to copy this over into my Bootstrap 4 folder that I'm working in right now. So you'll see it pop in there. So now we can access that. Okay, so now the first thing that we're going to do is code out this cover and I'm going to use some HTML5 tags because why not? Section. Now also some of you might be wondering uh, you're going to see this a lot in my coding style in this uh, course. I'm just going to be typing out the tag and then I'm going to hit tab and it's going to fill out that tag for me. It's because I'm using Emmet. As you can see here, I'm using a plugin called Emmet and it's free and it installs and plugs right into uh, brackets. It also installs and plugs into other popular editors such as Coda and uh, other ones as well. So if you're using brackets, I would suggest installing Emmet, getting that going because it helps you code so fast. And I'll show you some of that stuff. Uh, well, actually right now, let me show you an example. So I'm gonna code a section with the ID of cover. For example, in Emmet, all I have to do is section, uh, pound sign, cover, and then hit tab, and that will fill that out for me. Now that's just a tiny fraction of what it can do. Let me show you something even cooler. Uh, I don't wanna overwhelm you, but I'll show you what it looks like, and then we'll, I'll circle back and we'll start again. So I need section with the ID of cover, and then I need it to have a child element, uh, which is gonna have, uh, gonna be a div with the ID of cover caption. It knows if I don't put any element uh, and I just put an ID or a class, it will automatically assume a div. So I'm gonna say cover caption. That's gonna have the uh, a div or a child div with the class of container. This is a bootstrap class. You'll probably recognize that. And then inside container, I'm gonna have another div with the class of call dash small or sm dash 10. It's also gonna have the class of call-sm-offset-1. Now I'm gonna stop there because I can keep going forever and ever. Watch what happens when I hit tab. Bam, I just coded that markup just by typing a single line and hitting tab, and it's perfect. Section ID of cover, div with the ID of cover caption, div with the class of container, div with the class of call small 10, call small offset one. So go ahead and code this out. I'll leave that up there for you to kind of copy out right now. And within our div with the, with the column classes there, I'm gonna have a level one heading, and it's just gonna say, welcome to bootstrap four, really could say whatever you want, and a paragraph tag, um, 
with just some dummy text, just like the old bootstrap, but better. And then some lorem ipsum. I'm just going to type lorem and hit tab. And then bam, it fills it out. That's another cool thing about, um, I believe that's built into brackets, but that might be an Emmet thing as well. And it happens in Coda too. If you're using Coda, you could just literally type out lorem, hit tab, and it will fill out some lorem ipsum text for you. So there we go. We've got that. And now let's stop here and test to make sure that uh, it's actually working, that Bootstrap is hooked in and things look the way they should so far. So save that, open this in your browser. And here it is, welcome to Bootstrap 4 and some text. It's got the grid, you could tell it's, uh, it's hooked in, so we're ready to rock and roll. Let's keep going, and inside of our uh, cover caption in here, we're gonna add a form. So a cool thing about brackets is that it highlights the div that you're working within if you click on it, uh, which is really cool if you have a really messy uh, or a lot of code, a lot of lines of HTML, it will show you, hey, you're working within this, and it helps you to find your place a little bit better. So I'm going to add a form, and it's going to have the class of form-inline, and that's going to look like this. You don't have to fill in the action or anything like that because this is just a dummy uh, site. You don't actually have to put that in. If you want to make it dynamic, then for sure have at it. Form. I'm going to have inside here, I'm going to have a div with the class of form-group, and within form-group, uh, this is a bootstrap styles, uh, by the way, bootstrap classes. So form inline, I want it to be an inline form that's built into bootstrap uh, and form group. This is just, um, it groups labels and inputs so that you, it, uh, it has built in styles and uh, layout. So you just have to type that out. I'm going to have a label and uh, I'm going to keep it simple and just give it the class of SR dash only. I don't actually want it to show up unless it is in um, a screen reader and that's a bootstrap class as well. It's a utilities class sr dash only hides uh, any element that you want it to except for when it's on a screen reader, which is pretty cool. It's just the stylistic purposes. So input, I'm going to give it the class of form dash control. This is a bootstrap class and a form dash control dash LG. Now that looks like this for those of you not using Emmet, so you're not confused. Input type text class form dash control form-control-lg, that gives me a large uh, form, and that's bootstrap styles, I'll show you that in a moment, and a placeholder, Jane Doe, whatever you really wanna put in there. So save this, and let's have a little look in our browser to see if we got, uh, we're on the right track. There we go, Jane Doe, big input, it's got all the styles, everything looks good, it already looks great. Uh, okay, so I'm basically just gonna copy this right here, and I'm gonna paste it again and you'll see what happens with the inline form here in a moment. And I'm gonna change this to email, and instead of placeholder Jane Doe, let's say placeholder is jane.doe at uh, example.com. Uh, save that, and now go have a little look in the browser again, and you'll see the inline form already starting to come together. Pretty cool. This would have taken you a lot of CSS to get right, and it's already built in. Uh, it's baked in, it looks great, it's responsive, it works great on screen readers, it's, it's amazing. You literally just typed a couple lines of HTML and you have a perfect inline form, perfectly styled with all of the right helper classes and everything built in, it's amazing. Love it, you can tell that I'm excited about Bootstrap. Okay, next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna add a button. And uh, it's gonna be after this form group div here and we're gonna uh, add button, this is an HTML tag, with the class of BTN, and also btn-success and btn-lg. It looks like this. So this is these are bootstrap classes. This gives you a button. This has always been the case. btn-success, and whoops, this is a mistake here. Make sure to do this. btn-success and then btn-large. Gives you a large button with the green color uh, and btn just establishes the button styles. And then I'm also going to, uh, bootstrap recommends uh, that you also give it the button type. So it, you could put button type button, or in this case, it would be a submit button. And then in here, I'm just going to say, okay, go. Great band. And then uh, it should be good. Let me save that and see what it looks like. There we go. It's got a perfect inline, uh, inline form. Great. And now one little thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to add a little button uh, that you can click just to take you down to the nav so you can skip the cover altogether. Just a little break tag. And I'm going to use an A tag with the class 
of BTN, also BTN-secondary-outline. That's a new Bootstrap 4 um, button class. I'll show you that in a moment. And BTN-SM for small. So it looks like this, href. It's going to connect to nav-main with the pound sign there. That's going to look for that once we code it. And these are the classes. Bootstrap also recommends that you give uh, any A tag with the class of button, the role of button, just it's uh, for semantic purposes. And then I'm just going to add a HTML entity, D-A-R-R, -R for down arrow. And now let's see what this looks like so far. There it is right there. So this is just a basic markup. We don't, we haven't custom styled. We're going to add some CSS to style it up a little bit, make it look a bit nicer, but so far so good. Next up, we're going to go in uh, and we're going to go straight into coding the navigation bar. And then we'll start, uh, we'll jump into the CSS to style these two things up just a little bit nicer. So we're going to jump out of our cover altogether. And let's start coding up our nav. So the nav and bootstrap, uh, there's a couple ways you could do this. You could follow along or you can go straight to, this is this is what's great about bootstrap. You can go to the uh, docs here and then go into the um, content. I believe it's content, components. Go to components and then just search for nav bar. Here it is right here. And it gives you all the documentation on it. And I highly suggest you read through this. Uh, any bootstrap developer should be looking through these um, doc, uh, this documentation pretty thoroughly. Um, so you're not wondering why is that class this, or why is that markup like that? Well, read the documentation and you'll know. Um, but I'm, I'm here to help you understand it a little bit better. So you literally could just copy to clipboard, bam, there's your navigation bar. So I'm, I'm literally going to do that right now. And I'm going to copy it. I'm going to go in here and I'm going to paste. And we have our markup for the nav bar. I'm going to just clean this up a little bit um, just so that's using the same tabbing convention as I am. So here it is. There it is for me. Uh, we This is just the basic nav bar. And you can kind of customize it as you wish. There are a lot of cool things you could do with it. For example, right now it has nav bar, nav bar light, and BG faded. Let's see what this looks like. It looks like this in the browser. It's quite light and it's full width and um, you know you can't really see much else because it's quite light. So I want it to actually be a dark nav bar. So instead of nav bar light, I will use nav bar dark. And then the other thing I will do, because it's nav bar dark, watch what happens. Now you can't read the, uh, the links because it turned everything white. And what that does is it makes the text, the content within the nav bar, light so that you can add one more class, which is um, BG for background dash inverse and remove BG faded because that is the faded one that you just saw. So BG inverse is a dark one. BG faded is light one. There are also other ones that you could do, which I'll show you in a moment. So there we go. We've got a uh, dark nav bar in here. You can actually play around with the background colors very easily using BG dash and whatever inverse primary or, you know, you could just straight up style it and be whatever color you want. You're not limited to two colors. Of course not. And I see there's a little rounded border around here, and that's because uh, it needs one. I don't want it to be, so I'm going to go in here and add a class that is just navbar dash full. And basically that will make it the full width of the browser. And to confirm that is the case, you'll see a very subtle change in the border, the border radius. Now it just sticks to the edge. No, no matter how wit, wide or anything, it'll always be a full style looking uh, nav bar. It's very subtle. And I'm also going to give this the ID of nav-main because we are accessing that or looking for it in our little anchor uh, link right here. So we need to have that. And you can change the nav bar brand to your logo. You can have it literally be whatever you want. Uh, you can put an image in there. I'm just going to have text that says your logo. And I'm going to save this. And let's see what it looks like so far. There we go. Your logo home features pricing about. Great. Now, I want to style this up. So we've got the uh, we've got the markup here. And we've customized the nav bar a little bit. But I want to make this look better. So it's very, very straightforward. Let's head back to our code editor. And now we're going to need to add a style sheet. And we don't have our own custom style sheet in here. So we're going to start out by creating a new file and call it styles.css or whatever you really want to call it. 
Uh, I'm just going to say styles.css, bam, and back in our index here, I'm going to have to hook that in. That's obviously what you need to do after your bootstrap CSS, because uh, if you're going to be overriding bootstrap CSS, which you will be, you need to have it afterwards because it is cascading style sheets. It's going to go down in order. If your style sheet is before bootstrap, then you're never going to get your styles to show up. I'm going to say custom CSS and we're just going to link rel. Of course, it's going to be a style sheet. And then the href, we're going to be looking for styles.css. Bam, no problem. Just like that. Save that. And now we'll have our style sheet hooked in. So now jump into your style sheet. And there's a few things that we need to start off by doing. HTML and body. I'm going to give these the height of 100%. I want this cover, this, um, this to be the height of the browser. So I need to make sure that HTML and the body tag are 100% of the height of the browser. Simply just add height 100%. It's already with 100% because it's a block level element. And um, I'm going to save that. Let's just uh, do that. You probably won't really see any change right now, so I'm not going to jump into the, into the uh, browser. And next up, we're just going to style that cover. So I'm just going to say cover. And we're going to select cover with the ID of cover background. We're going to give it a background of triple two and the URL. We're going to be looking for an image that is in our image folder there. Image slash stars dot JPG. And I'm going to say no repeat. I'm going to also want to make the background size cover. So it covers the cover. The color of the text will be white. The height of the cover must be 100% and uh, just throw in uh, the text align center as well. And let's, uh, let's save this, see what happens. All right, so we have our stars like so. And uh, if you move your browser around, it will actually, you'll see the whole image, which is actually quite nice. So I actually kind of want to change the position of that. So I see more than just the stars. I kind of like the mountain. So I'm going to say, bottom center. Let's see if that does anything. I'm not sure it will. Kind of, you can, now you can see the lake, but if you resize, you're good to go. I'm going to try one more thing. I'm going to say center center, and that will give me a nicer look. There we go. That's cool. I like that. Okay. Next thing I want to do is I want to center this in the middle and I can do that by making the cover, the uh, display table, and then the cover caption, uh, just table cell, and then align it uh, in the middle, which is something you totally can do. Uh, but because you have access to Flexbox in Bootstrap 4, you can actually use Flexbox, which is simply display flex align items center. And now if you save that, you're going to, you're going to see that it's centered, but there's gonna be one little problem. It's centered in the middle, but uh, it's now not full width. And you should be able to remedy that problem by simply giving the width to cover caption of 100%. And that should solve the problem. Let's just double check. That's because cover caption wasn't getting its full width. And let's just make sure, there you go. Centered vertically and horizontally using Flexbox. Super, super cool. Uh, and now the only thing left to do now is just uh, I'm gonna make the cover caption level one heading is a little bit bigger and you could do that really easily in CSS or right in the markup. You can give a bootstrap class to the level one heading of something like class of display and one, two, three, four, five, or six. I'm going to go for three because I think one is quite large. Open bootstrap four. And there you go. That's, that's the cover and the navigation bar. All right. So, uh, hang tight. See you in the next lecture. We're going to code even more of the site. We're going to go through baby steps, like I said. See you there.